Welcome viewers, this is Windshare. Lots to talk about in this video. I want to talk about two topics in particular. I want to review, first of all, uh, the second Assault DLC that we've been in, uh, enjoying here for some time. And uh, the second item I want to address uh, specifically is a weapon review uh, in combination with this video of the U100 uh, MK5 and the support class. Uh, Right now, what you're going to be seeing is probably a game mode most of you have not participated in. It was a game mode I, I kind of overlooked, but found it is very effective and, and joyful with Operation Metro, and that is Obliteration. Now, this is all PlayStation 4 gameplay that you guys are seeing here, and this is a big weakness right now on, on next-gen console. Most of you guys on PC probably uh, don't experience this because the experience is much better on PC server-wise. Uh, a big complaint a lot of us have on console, on uh, playing console, is the lack of uh, servers in terms of uh, user-defined servers, where you can define maps, uh, equipment types, and so on. So uh, that's a frustration we have, but let me talk quickly about the stats here with the U100. Look at the stats in this gun. I'm comparing it to the uh, RPK-12. The vertical recoil and the side-to-side -side recoil is actually better with the RPK-12 than the U100. But, again, statistically, as one, thing, one frame of mind, another frame of mind is the actual performance of the weapon. And this weapon performs very well at medium to long range. So even though the RPK-12, I think, is statistically better than this gun, in terms of its actual performance, I'd say it's right up there with the RPK-12. Personally, I still prefer the RPK, but this weapon's still devastating. Now, you're seeing me pull out the mortar a lot in this gameplay, and I wanted to address that specifically on this map, this game mode, because... The mortar is very effective out in the open like this. It can reach just about anywhere. There's lots of snipers on this map, on this game mode in particular. So it's a great piece of equipment, a great tool to counter that strategy that players use. So it, it doesn't get you a lot of high marks for respect, but it is effective, and that's what we're here for. Right here, you can see the weakness of this gun. Is when you get in ranges like this, even weapons like a slow-firing SAR-21 in the assault class uh, will drop you. So it's very, very weak in, in that kind of situation. You want to really push yourself when you're utilizing this weapon to stay away from those range engagements. You have to be aware of what you're getting into with this weapon. Uh, and that goes with any weapon. Uh, not... I mean, there are weapons that I would argue the carbines, which I still, I'm going to have to make a video about how I think they really are overpowered, because those carbines, for the most part, are effective at, at really, I think, too broad a, a range of situations, whereas a lot of weapons like in support class or uh, well, your, your weapons outside of the carbines are much more restrictive in their employment on the battlefield. U-100 is a great example of that. Excuse the phone there. Um... What, uh, what I, again, I want to touch base again is with the, uh, the console experience right now is I have not heard any communication with DICE with this stuff. I, I, would figure out, I would figure by now with Second Assault we would at least have some kind of communication as to when we can expect uh, servers that we can rent or control ourselves. I mean, I, I would figure EA would be the first to push that through saying here's a chance for more revenue like we have with Battlefield 3 to employ uh, rents, rented servers and charge sixty dollars uh, for every two months or something like that. So I'm surprised I've not seen that yet on console. But again, on PC, that's that's already pretty much a standard. I'm not sure if they're renting those or, or how they're able to uh, to utilize those those servers and stipulate things like on Operation Metro, no explosives or here's this map rotation, so on and so forth. So again, that's a that's a big discrepancy between. Right now, right, what we're experiencing on console and PC, particularly on the player accounts as well. Uh, that's another topic. But what I'm talking about here again, obliteration on Operation Metro is a lot of fun. As you can see, I really like that outside. Uh, I've always liked that outside portion of Metro. When you get into the tunnels here, it's a completely different experience. Very, very difficult. Now, I'm not running with the uh, U100 because you shouldn't be running with that weapon in these confines. So you'll be seeing me show some gameplay with the uh, M249 here. Now, what I want to see in Battlefield 4, maybe a future release, is a Riot Shield. Call me a COD fan, but to me, I think a Riot Shield in these kind of situations, if you had a group of guys who were able to crouch behind it and kind of push up through those choke points and, and deflect bullets and explosives, at least in front of them, I'm not sure what you behind them, but I think that would be a good tool to have uh, as a piece of equipment, maybe a support class to run with it or something like that to kind of stem the, the the trench warfare here in the gameplay. 
Also, I've mentioned this before in a previous video, how to fix Metro. I would also like to see the EM apps, the support class piece of equipment that's supposedly it destroys explosives like this or take shells. I would like to see that adapted to take out hand grenades. Now, this gentleman right here was a, a guy that's seen my uh, uh, videos here before, uh, Jasper uh, Newton. He's a cool guy. He, he just happened to run into him randomly on the battlefield. He recognized me, and uh, I added him as friends. And next thing you know, we're, we're rolling together. And I always enjoy playing with you guys. Uh, appreciate your support. Uh, you know, if you're cool, you got a mic on, uh, I'll play with you uh, if, if, I, if I bump into you on the battlefield. So he got a, an epic flank there. God knows how he got by the lines here. But to me, this is the impossible game mode. Here's so I'm moving on next gameplay. Capture the flag. I want to see uh, my standing challenge to anybody out there is is I want to see somebody win this game mode on Operation Metro with 64 players because it is 64 players as well on console uh, Capture the flag, but when you get these moments this guy I mean Jasper pushed behind the lines got the beacon up and then you spawn behind this is where you just you can almost read the minds of the players and they're just like how the hell did these guys get behind us you know <laughs> and this is the epic rage back rage moments here with the m249 lots of fun suppressor is a must but my standing challenge is, is i think this is the impossible game mode capture the flag on operation metro there's no way in hell you're going to get through those lines capture the flag and then you're on the mini map and then you have 64 players to fight back through or, you know, excuse me, 32 players to fight back through those choke points to get to your objective. Impossible task. I'll say it right now. There's no way you'll ever complete that task. But moving on, that's Operation Metro. I mean, take it for what it's worth. I've enjoyed, I enjoy seeing it back. It looks much better now on on uh, next gen console. Uh, I think the blue tent's gone. That looks that looks a lot better. Levolution's not really there, guys. I mean, uh, I just don't see it. But there is Levolution here in this map. Caspian Border. This map looks great. There's no question. Uh, capture Flag's, I think, a fun game mode to play on this as well. Of course, Capture Flag being one of the game modes we're able to experience now with Second Assault. Uh, but I still prefer Obliteration. I think it's... I don't know why. It's, it's just me personally. But, again, on console, you have taken the fact that Obliteration has half the player count than Capture Flag does right now. So that's a frustration as well. So uh, when it comes to this size of map, I would prefer to play uh, Capture Flag just for the higher player count. Uh, but the game mode in particular that I prefer still is obliteration. But again, the M249 here, lots of range capability with this weapon. This is why I still prefer this over just about any weapon in the support class, even the U100. I mean, this weapon is still capable of, of making kills like the U100 is at range. And I'll be showing gameplay here. I'll get back to the review here of the U100 in a moment. And this is where I realized, oh, I don't have C4. So this would be a great time to have C4 when guys are right around this corner. I think I scared that guy by suppressing him or something. He, he retreated. But Caspian Border looks good. Uh, but I am impressed with Second Assault. If there's one map they got right in Second Assault, it was this one. Uh, the Levolution effects are just great. Uh, however, there is issues. This, this great wall of China right here, if you want to call it that. I mean, I understand what they're trying to do here at Caspian Border. Get these... The effect of a uh, an actual border event here that you got a wall restricting a border, but to me it gives you an unfair tactical advantage to the U.S. side, particularly on game modes like capture a flag. If you got this big wall guard towers in here, really, uh, and this is what you're going to see by the way, guys camping recon with claymores, but it really allows an advantage in terms of balancing on one side of of the game and uh, and the U.S. side in particular. Also. I guess you could argue you, Russia could take advantage of this as well as you got guys bipoded up here uh, near the uh, tower you know, with support guns. So, you know, the, the wall creates a unique gameplay experience. Uh, you know, whether or not I really think they needed to put it in, uh, I'm going to have to say no because I think it's more of an aggravation than anything. Uh, but this is still cool moments like this. I mean, we've had so much detail in these maps. You know, uh, this radio tower going down, uh, this the destructibility here's this huge tower and i, I forgive me for not get, actually recording the gameplay of it coming down but uh you can get inside this tower you can get on top of it it's a great sniper point this is a tactical point in this map uh and uh, oh by the way i want to mention why is there no transport helicopter and capture a flag that doesn't make any sense to me but we have an obliteration okay uh, that was an uh, that was a odd feature that i've not seen in uh, capture flag for some reason but when this tower comes down, it creates all kinds of avenues and, and uh, it, you know, breaks the wall. It, it, it's just a great a great feature. I'm really pleased with Caspian Border. Now, moving on to Operation Firestorm, you can see here 
Look at the long range capability of this weapon, the U100. Uh, I mean, you put a stubby grip on it. Uh, I like uh, stubby grip. I'll put muzzle brake on it. I'll put a heavy barrel on it. it just, anything really works at the U100. But uh, Operation Firestorm to me was the strangest aspect of Second Assault. Why did they bring this map back into it? Everybody is in agreement, and I think even the polls showed that Grand Bazaar was a favored map to come back or be returned into Second Assault. But for some reason, for some reason, they brought back Firestorm against everybody's wishes, and I just don't really see this map being that fun. Uh, I played it, I never really enjoyed it much on Battlefield 3. And I don't see much change through Battlefield 4. If anything, they've changed with this map. It's an aggravation. Uh, there's all these pools of gasoline and flammable material that catch fire and they kill you randomly. And it's very frustrating. I'll show that here in, in just uh, a few moments. Uh, and again, the layout of the map, there's really not much evolution here. Uh, it's just, it just seems like a, just a straight up port of the map and with some lighting changes and fire effects. And then they, they you know, they put the stamp on it and let's call it second assault so this is my biggest disappointment and i'll get into gulf of oman here too i have very similar feelings for uh, gulf of oman but again in terms of this performance the u100 these kind of range engagements i like putting a, a scope on this weapon uh, i've got a suppressor on at this point in time i don't encourage the slowdown i was getting frustrated earlier in i think a previous match of, of getting lit up on the mini map without a suppressor so i put one on and it boy does it change this weapon the muzzle velocity is one of the strongest aspects of this weapon. I think it's like 600 meters a second. And of course, when you put a suppressor on, you you considerably reduce that. So I feel like this weapon's really uh, lackluster with a suppressor on it. Uh, and there a moment ago, you could see the explosiveness going on. And, and uh, moments like this, when you spawn your teammate that's saved him from getting knifed and he has no clue that it even happened, it's kind of funny. But uh, it, again, this weapon... Elevation is very good uh, situationally for this weapon in terms of its performance on the battlefield. Uh, it's a good run and gun weapon. Its aiming down sight accuracy is incredibly small. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a solid weapon. Uh, initially I didn't like it, uh, and that's you know, kind of a common occurrence to have sometimes with weapons, but the more I've used it, I've really begun to understand what this weapon is capable of. It's not that bad. It, it really isn't. Uh, you, again, you just have to understand and keep away from those short range engagements. Here in this building, you can see the top uh, skylights there. That's a new addition there. Here's a fire. Don't run in it. It'll take you out real quick. I mean, it looks good, though. Uh, we'll say that. But again, it's just kind of an aggravation. And uh, it, it really, I mean, it restricts your movement. And whenever it just blows up around you and takes you out, you're like, wow, you know, what is killing me? And it's, it's kind of like the scenario grenade when it goes off. It just keeps going and going. And it, it just kind of hear that hit marker sound. And it's just, just kind of frustrating. Uh, again, these kind of range engagements are where this weapon really shines tactically. Medium range, I mean, I have no, uh, no hesitation at all about going full auto with this weapon or employing a burst fire uh, uh, type of uh, use with it. It does have a burst fire mode. I, some people like that over the automa automatic version of it, but I find that I can feather the trigger a little bit better in auto mode as opposed to uh, having the restrictiveness of the burst fire mode. But Obliteration, another good game mode on this map. I think it works out well. Uh, but, but overall, this Firestorm, it, it, there's just something missing here with this map. I just don't like it. Uh, the layout of it, it's too open or something. I, I just never could quite put my finger on it. There again, you can see the range of this weapon. So here's what I'm talking about, where you just have random fire events. I mean, granted, I just don't see myself, my health reducing, and the next thing you know, you're, just, you're dead. So... Again, Firestorm, I would say, no, not a big fan. Now, lastly, we'll move into uh, Gulf of Oman. This is a map I always liked at Battlefield 3. And now, the, of course, the big, the, the big Levolution event is the Storm. And some people kind of call that a, a scapegoat for a Levolution event. But it's funny to me how everybody is critical of Levolution being a kind of a gimmick effect. And here's the... Uh, the GOL Magnum, the one-shot kill every time weapon. Welcome to COD. Uh, but you know, everybody's critical of Levolution being a, a gimmick event that doesn't really affect the gameplay. But yet, that's the number one thing you keep hearing everybody being critical of in these DLCs that are released, both in uh, China Rising and now Second Assault. Uh, and I think you could argue in levels like Caspian Border, le that Levolution effect, that tower coming down, is a, is a significant effect on the actual gameplay. Uh, and also here with the Storm, 
it is definitely a significant event when your visibility is restricted. I'll show it here in a moment. Oh, and here's the joy of destruction. I see a four on the wall. Guys try to go around to get the knife. I beat him to it. My teammate there. And, I mean, this you know, guys just don't see that kind of stuff coming. Here you can see the storm rolling in. It's a pretty, I think it's a pretty impressive uh, experience when you see this thing rolling. We actually see it on the battlefield. The trees swaying in the extreme winds. Uh, the reduced visibility. However, I, I question the visibility. It seems to kind of go up and down as the match progresses. And I still get sniped all day long. It doesn't matter. Um, but, you know, all in all here again, there's another issue of, of uh, map balancing because the U.S. side has a bunch of water. And again, here we're giving the edge to the U.S. side. Why do they get two attack boats on these game modes here? Um, uh, it seems strange to me because you'll see me plant the bomb and the next thing you know I'm getting killed by a attack boat because they have water over there. And Yeah, it's, it seems like that was just a, a, a knee-jerk thing like, oh, we got water, let's throw a boat in. Or, it, you know, in terms of the actual balancing mindset of, of the developers, I'm not sure what they're thinking there because obviously the, uh, the team I'm on here has no water uh, to counteract that. We have no access there. So here's the storm rolling in. Personally... I don't like it, and the reason why is because it, maybe it's the old man of me, but it hurts my eyes visually. Whenever I play this map on an extended time frame in the storm, and it's usually here for quite a while, it, there's something about it, uh, the focus of my eyes on the screen, it just it blurs my vision, it hurts, it strains my eyes, and after a while I find myself you know, getting tired by this, uh, this experience. But it does look cool. I think it's a good addition to this map, but again, why did we bring back Gulf of Oman? I, I, I mean, it was brought back in Battlefield 3. It was what, I think, ruined the original maps in Battlefield 2. So the Legacy Battlefield guys have played this map enough. I feel like they probably deserve something better. Uh, we as a community deserve something a little more unique in uh, our experience. Um, you know, maybe bringing back a vanilla map from Battlefield 3 might be kind of a good throwback. Again, I mentioned... Uh, Grand Bazaar, maybe Sane Crossing, I'm not sure. You know, some kind of infantry map is really, I think, where the future is. But all in all, second I saw, I'm going to say it kind of missed the mark. I'm not too impressed with it, really. Uh, and I think most of the community can say the same. But hopefully with Naval Strike coming up here, we'll see something new. However, I'm not too excited based on the screenshots I've seen. It looks a lot like Wake Island to me. Again, a lot of open expanses and, and very vehicle-oriented map gameplay. So we'll see. I I've got good hopes. Hopefully we can still get some of the bugs addressed here in the gameplay, and particularly servers on console. I mean, this needs to be changed like yesterday. Thanks for watching, guys. Please like and subscribe. Sorry for the lengthy review. The U100, not a bad weapon. I encourage you to try it, and I'll have more content to come.